We are here, episode number 44 with Tem Kolyosho on the Path to Fall podcast. Tem, thanks for coming in. Hello, it's great to be here. Awesome to see you off the screen. We have short fiction, yep. senior elective together, but that's pretty much all virtual. Some mm-hmm. days you come in, but yeah. it's been such a weird year. What is it? What is this COVID experience from, th- from I guess, your junior year? Because you were in my junior English class. Mm-hmm. We went home after spring break last year, and then it's been abnormal ever since. How, is, um, how have you handled that as a <clears throat> student here at Gilman? Uh, Well, I think definitely transitioning from last year to this year, it's been way better because if you remember last year when we were going through this whole thing, it was right during spring break. And from a student perspective, it was like extra week of break. Like this is kind of nice. Like we thought we'd somewhat finesse the system. Like it was going to be a quick, quick little pandemic and then we'll be right back to it. But it was actually kind of miserable during those like months afterwards. And this year we kind of... I felt maybe last year we didn't have a plan, really, because no one had a plan. No one really knew what was going on. But this year, you can tell, like, teachers put in a lot of work over the summer. And obviously, with transitioning to hybrid learning, it's been a lot smoother. So although it's not ideal, it's definitely way, way better than it was last year. And, like, the whole being able to be on campus at all, almost from the start of the year, has just been great. Mm -hmm. So I only see my class in terms of what I'm doing to help you guys have an decent experience virtually what are some of your other teachers doing this year that has really improved from last year in terms of setting up canvas and varying some activities and having conversations through zoom what are some of the teachers who have really successfully maneuvered the the hybrid learning system uh definitely my computer science class my psychology class and my art class i think are the most they're pretty different subjects obviously but with computer science like it's a computer class, so I guess the whole distance learning doesn't really affect him as much as other teachers. And he's done a really good job. Obviously, sitting in front of a computer screen all day, like when you're doing short fiction, you can have a discussion. But when you're doing computer science, it's not really much to talk about. He's really done a good job doing like asynchronous work and synchronous work and coming in. Some days we'll only come in for like 15 minutes. Other days we'll do the full like 70. And everything's just run so you wouldn't really be able to tell that the class was ever not virtual. Uh, with my psychology class, it's based almost purely on discussion. So she's really navigated breakout rooms really well, group projects, everything's kind of group oriented. And she's trying to create like the most in-person environment she can. Uh, it's a like a coordinated class. So we can't really do anything mm-hmm. together, mm-hmm. but she's done a really good job. And then Mr. Conley in the art room has just done fantastic with the whole doing art at home and doing art in the building he's provided us with like supplies everything we need and honestly like art's probably the thing i'm most passionate about out of my classes and being able to just work independently and turning in and uploading pictures of my work emailing him he's been so responsive so that's definitely worked really well yeah the art room is one thing that i've been really curious about because in in previous years i usually hang out in there and Mm -hmm. and set up with you guys but hasn't really been the case this year just because I've been doing my own thing, getting ready for my classes, and the art room has been pretty siphoned off. I haven't seen Mr. Connolly too much this year, but ha- mm-hmm. how is he How is he making that experience in art, which is so hands-on and, mm-hmm. and really is fueled by his advice and him walking around the room and, and teaching you certain things one-on-one, how has he made that work this year? Well, with the uh, seniors, he doesn't really – we've kind of, I guess, moved past the whole, like, he's watching over you at all times and trying to take a look at, like, all your work and individual, like, stroke technique and all of that. He's kind of moved past that to the point where it's just, he trusts us to work by ourselves and upload every Wednesday, I think it is. And just, he looks at it, he comments on it, and we all comment on each other's work, and that's worked really smoothly. But obviously with the kids in the grade below, it's really hand. It's a really hand. Like you said, it's a really hands-on process when you're just learning because he kind of guides you to, through that. And he has told us that it's been really challenging to get like the freshmen and sophomores as involved, especially those who don't actually come into school. But he, he's just trying to do the best he can. Mm-hmm. He uh, does like Loom videos and stuff like that, where he just 
you can do like all you can do at this point. But. Right. When you say upload, so you guys take a picture of your mm -hmm. paintings and just what's is that Canvas you use for that or? Uh, we use Google Drive and we have one big shared folder for our whole class and then people just upload progress pics and then every Wednesday you'll go in to the folder, go through everyone's thing and comment. What did you think about this? How does it relate to your thesis? What's so just peer review. some some critiques on there. So mm -hmm. he's figured out a way to make that work. What are you working on in art right now? I just finished my largest piece. I think it's 36 by 36. I'm not completely sure. I just finished my largest piece. It was a uh, like a square um, abstract piece of two monks like fighting each other. And then in the background, there's like a person in the kimono like kind of watching over them. It's just really like abstract and colorful. It's, I've tried to dive into abstract more this year, mm -hmm. but um, we're actually having a show in April, mid-April, where all the senior thesis pieces are just going to be displayed, I think, in the Lumen Center around oh, there. Cool. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to check that out. I've seen a couple in the hallway, but yeah. how did you get the idea for this abstract monk piece? Uh, that's a good question. That's <laughs> It's everything I do in our art class since junior year, since I declared for like my thesis has been pretty abstract and really just if I like watch a movie or I see something, I like take a picture of it and it like doesn't matter what it is. I'll just take it like my camera was just filled with just random pictures. And then when it's time to paint, I just scroll through and try to see if I have any inspiration. And in this one, I had a picture I saw on Instagram of like these two monks fighting and then I remembered a painting that I saw last year. Um, one of my favorite painters, Christian Hook, he does these like Asian uh, kimono like dress things. And I was like, all right, if I put these two together, it could be pretty cool. So I just did. Mm, interesting. Um, the thesis for art, what is that? I don't know too much about declaring for a thesis your junior year and, and then engaging with this. Is it a year long project during your senior year? So, uh, the junior year curriculum is actually like the AP art thing and they make you turn in like a paragraph, like 500 words or something about what it, you're actually painting. And uh, we have, we call that our thesis, but then you paint, you turn that in all junior year, then senior year, it's a bit more serious. He makes you do it yourself and uh, you write like one to two pages about how you've evolved from when you last declared that to what you're doing now. and. Everyone writes it up. We do the same peer review. We all read each other's theses, and then we go from there to see how does your work that you're doing now relate to what you wrote about. Hmm. And you came to Gilman in what third grade? Yep. Third grade. Have you always been into art? Has that always been your favorite class or your favorite thing that you do here at Gilman, or no. is that recent? Um, going into uh, third, third, middle, uh, like lower school wasn't really. Art was pretty loose. It was just kind of like. You, everyone had to do it and then in middle school we had electives and I chose art just because I thought it was like kind of fun I, I like to doodle and stuff like that but then the middle school art teacher told me like you can kind of paint like you do all right I was like okay like I might as well keep going with it and then in upper school uh I was like I don't want to do like American government I didn't like I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do and I thought maybe art could be fun and I thought it'd be pretty laid back and then Ever since I chose that, it's been like probably the most intense thing I do, mm -hmm. and I've just stuck with it. So do you do a lot of that on your own at your house, or is it all, do you come into the art studio, or where do you find time to, to paint on your own? Because I know it does, it is intense, it takes a lot of time, a lot of practice. You really have to do a lot more maybe outside of the classroom because you only have, what, yeah. 80 minutes, mm -hmm. right? Right. 15 to 20 is getting the supplies out yeah. almost and then Cleaning putting them up. away. Yeah. So uh, how do you find the time to, to I feel practice? Like there's a huge, I guess it's not really spoken about because it it's kind of like, I don't know why people would randomly talk about this, but there's a huge like art culture actually amongst the kids who do do drawing and painting and um, artists from the grade above us, like I'm sure you know, like Andy Weinstein, Adam Mason and all those like really great painters, they're like so into it. And when you're in the grade below and you see these kids who sacrifice, like really smart kids, like sacrifice their study time to go into the art room during free periods, you kind of just adopt the same mentality. Like, if I really want to get better, I should be in there with them. So all of the kids in my class, we would just, instead of going to study hall, we'd always sign up for the art blocks, and we'd just always be in there. 
because you really don't get a lot of work like you don't get a lot of work done in the classroom it's mainly on your own time in the studio and covid's made that harder obviously because you're not really in like a professional looking studio you're at home like i paint in my room but you if you really care you like you'll find the time to do it so for sure um, one of the previous guests we had on here was Mr. Molina, and he came in with his recently published uh, Jim Huckleberry with your cover. Um, can you can you talk a little bit about that whole process? How did how did Mike find that piece that you made, and what was the conversation like to use that for his cover of his of his book? Yeah, it was actually really random. I was um, just painting for my thesis for the AP and. I think he was doing maybe tours or he was talking to some prospective parents and he just walked in and coincidentally I was like at the forefront of the room like where you'd walk in I was the first one he saw and he was just like what's going on with this and once again it was just me like through my camera roll just some random stuff I'd put together and he was like like what's going on I kind of enjoy this and I was like oh I don't know I'm just kind of working with it and it was like around halfway done and he was saying um, do you like keep me updated like what's going on with this I was like, yeah, sure. And then a couple weeks later, he was like, I'm interested in buying it. So I thought I was just going like, to hang it up on his wall or something. And I was like, yeah, that's cool. And then later on, he was like, I actually want to use this for my book. And I was like, all right, that's really cool. Like, mm-hmm. And um, <laughs> we, he just put together like a little contract, and he um, actually paid me for it, which was really nice. And um, yeah, he just used it as his book. It's pretty cool. Um and and the idea there, similar to the the monk painting that you described, is you just took a picture of of something and and found it interesting and used it for your abstract painting. And there wasn't really much else to that idea. It was it was really abstract in that way. Mm-hmm. Cool. And him, like he saw it and he thought it looked like someone going on a journey. Like kind of relates to his book, like a guy going on a journey. But personally, I didn't I didn't see that when I was looking at it. It was just like something I painted awesome so Tim let's talk a little bit um, something else that you are involved with here at Gilman outside of the art program uh, is student council and in the student body and you're this you're the class president how did you get involved in uh, student government at Gilman when did that start um it's uh, interesting I actually talked about this with Mr. Smythe the other day on um on a zoom with alumni it was personally I was never in middle school like a leader of any kind. I was just kind of there. And um, when you're moving into the upper school, like as a freshman, you look and you remember kids like Thomas Booker, like Piper Bond, or these kids who are just like really athletic, like tall, super smart, they're well-spoken. And there's like these presences in the hallway. And I remember I was like, how, who in our grade could even like measure up to be something like that? And when we were doing elections as a uh, freshman, remember we had like the presidential elections and then all my friends were like, are you not gonna run for vice president? And I was like, why would I do that? It's just not me. They're like, no, a vice president should be someone, you don't have to be that guy. You just have to be someone who's like, people can work with and like they can trust that you'll get it done. So I was like, okay, I'll do it. And then they voted for me. And then the next year, the same thing happened. And then the year after that, so then senior year Tucker was running and he told me like it'd be really good if we did this together like I'll be uh, school president and you can run the class president and by then I realized it doesn't really matter if you're like this athletic or like tall or smart or varsity any of that it's really just like if you can be a friend to all people all people will try to be a friend to you so I was like I can just keep that mentality going and that's pretty much just why I do it so they pretty much almost talked you into it. You weren't really going to do it on your own, but I mean, that's really the way it should be, right? Your, your peers elect you. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's not just a popularity contest. They kind of identified Tem's the guy to, to do this. That's pretty awesome. How has it been your senior year and really your half of your junior year as the, the class president during such a disconnected time? Are you finding ways to engage your entire class and get get people together in, in some ways? Uh, I, obviously, at first, it was, like, kind of hard because, like, it feels, at, at the beginning of the year, it felt like everything was getting, like, shot down, like, um, not, like, by the school, like, shooting us down, but it was kind of just, like, senior treat, like, we don't know if it's going to happen, or, like, these, all these traditions, like, senior room, like, obviously can't happen, that kind of thing. 
at the beginning of the year, it's kind of like when you hear like your classmates say like, oh, the school year sucks and all this stuff. Like as a president, you're thinking, okay, like, this is not good if the class morale is this bad. But the class of 2021 has really like bought into it at this point. We've realized that we can't like just end the pandemic overnight and we can't like just tell the administration that we're just going to do whatever we want, obviously. So now as the president, I felt that the students have really helped me a lot because everything that Tucker and I or uh, Jake, Dutch, Carter, the rest of us put together, the students, like bingo night we had the other night, they all come in with all the energy they have. And although it might not be the most like bingo, it's not obviously the most like fun <laughs> thing to do as a senior on a Friday night, but they all come in with energy and that's pretty much all we can do. Making the most of things. And mm -hmm. I saw a, a few guys out at the lacrosse game the other day, which was nice that you guys, if you, if you come to school, you can automatically go to the game. So mm -hmm. that's that's another silver lining is now things are starting to open up with mm -hmm. athletics and baseball and lacrosse and tennis and everything that's going on now. So that's something else that's yeah. going pretty well. Um, so let me ask you, what what – really um what do you like most about being a student leader being a senior leader and is this something that you want to pursue more down the road student government or is it really um more focused on gilman and, and the senior class here um well my favorite part is definitely just the ability to reach a broad range of like students i feel like um my strongest suit and or my uh, the best thing about me being on the student council is that I feel like most of my peers or kids in my grade can tell me how they feel about situations and I can then bring that to the rest of the council. So I feel like just trying to be an approachable face is something I've always like strived to be. And I feel like this year I have can there's been countless times where kids that I probably haven't talked to in like a couple years or since COVID will reach out to me and be like, Tim, we should really try to do this or let's get this going. And I really appreciate that. Uh, in terms of doing it in the future, I'm really not sure if in college I would like pursue student government or even like as a career choice, like government, I'm not sure if that's for me. But if I am once again that guy that people want to rely on, then I will be that guy. And you are all settled. You're going to Vanderbilt next year. What was your college selection process like during the pandemic? I imagine it's got to be so tough to visit schools mm -hmm. and get everything in that you needed to get in uh, during such a disconnected time, right? You probably did like a virtual tour of some schools. What was that like for you? And what advice maybe would you give to the juniors this year? Hopefully not the sophomores. Hopefully they'll have a more normal experience. Mm -hmm. But for the juniors, they're probably grappling with the same difficulties in terms of seeing the schools and choosing mm -hmm. the right one. How did you make that work? Uh, I would definitely say the most important thing in my decision making was reaching out to the Gilman community that you know at the schools that you are thinking of. Uh, for me, it was really like uh, making that decision of where I wanted to apply early to or maybe not apply early at all. Visiting schools, it was really difficult because like you said, you can't really go out and do much. And uh, every virtual tour kind of sounds the same. They're gonna tell you like the same thing, like we want you and like our school's inclusive and all that, but like you get that everywhere. So uh, personally, I talked to um, Jackson Shelby, if you remember him yep. and uh, Halden Ginsburg, they both go to Vanderbilt and they basically told me like, how it was and they didn't like lie to me they told me like during COVID right now it's not the best and all the other schools I was looking at I just reached out to old Gilman students who were currently there and to the juniors I would basically just say the same thing if you don't have the opportunity to actually go out and look at the school which should be like your primary focus is actually going onto the campus and seeing what it's about then I'd reach out to someone that you trust and you know that's going to tell you like an honest opinion of how it is and uh, with COVID, obviously, it's a lot harder to apply to schools and a lot more competitive. But um, I feel like the best thing, if you stress about it too much and let it take over your junior or senior year, then you're going to look back and probably think it wasn't worth it. Because I know a lot of my friends who have kind of let that stress either get to them or they've let the stress um, not eat them away. They've kind of just said it is what it is. 
I find that the people who don't let the stress get to them too much have enjoyed their senior year a lot more. And at the end of the day, I think it's just going to be okay. What are some of those maybe stresses that you felt in your high school experience, but in your college selection experience too, that, you know, a little bit of stress is probably good. It keeps you motivated, For but sure. what are some of those stresses that you were able to handle pretty well, you think? Um, I feel like if you personally, I felt like numbers was like just looking at numbers too closely. It was really detrimental to like a lot of people when they apply to colleges. Um, Obviously, we have, like, Naviance, and there's internet to look available. And if you go on the internet and you see, like, you need this, this, and this, and these extracurriculars and this many of this to go here, it can be really overwhelming. And with COVID, um, it's really hard to get, like, 10 extracurriculars that you are, like, doing, and you get, like, 10 hours a day, and you're just like, how is this even possible? And personally, when I looked at that, I was like, there's no way I can do this. But... If you look at the numbers too closely and your college counselors will tell you the same thing, then they won't really get you anywhere because every student's different. So that's really stressful, and I'm going to be honest, I let that eat away with me at some point. So I'd be like, there's no way if a kid with these stats and did all this didn't get in, there's no way I get in. I think you should just ignore that because it's all different for everyone. Thinking back to your Gilman experience, you came in in third grade, you were in lower school, middle school, and the upper school here. Um, what are some of the favorite classes that you've taken here, whether that's great teachers you've had? I'm sure you've had so many and it's hard to choose, but are any classes, do any classes stick out to you because of the teacher, because of the class makeup and who was in your class or the material, something that you really found engaging? I'm sure art is up there with Mr. Connolly, but mm -hmm. but anything else come to mind when you're looking back at the podcast here in a couple of years, anything that you really want to remember? Uh, I definitely remember Mr. Schloeder's. In uh, lower school, we didn't really have like classes. We kind of just had homerooms, and I was in Mr. Schloeder's homeroom. And uh, I think that was definitely like one of the first classes that I realized that Gilman was a bit different than my old school because he what was, what was your old school. I went to Trinity in um, Howard County. It's a like Catholic school. And uh, Mr. Schluter, basically why I enjoyed the class so much was it was really it was like the most real class I've been in uh, to that point because he wouldn't treat us like little kids. And uh, obviously now if he was like treating us the same way he back then he treated me right now I'd probably be like you're treating me like a little kid but at the time you tell us like in middle school this is not gonna fly um, you're gonna have a lot more freedom and he was really just straight up with us if we did something stupid he wouldn't like sugarcoat it he would just tell us like you can't do that or if we did something that was actually like pretty impressive he wouldn't he'd be like okay that was pretty cool so mm -hmm. he was just a really nice guy but he also kept it it's really real and also whenever I see him in the hallway he's never won't like say hi or he will bring up some memory we had back in the day and I really I really like teachers that you can do that with uh middle school there are a lot of really good classes but I think a standout for me was Mr. Colbertson math class in um eighth grade kind of just like a Gilman legend Mr. Colbertson and uh I liked his class because he was probably the teacher that was most passionate about what he was talking about and um he was also my homeroom teacher in middle school and everything he brought uh, kind of like the seniors this year, you just brought energy to every class. You could tell he actually wanted to be there. You'd get like kind of sad when the bell rang. And teachers like that who, like no one wants to just like, well, I mean, some people do, but like no one really just wants to sit there and do math for like X amount of time. But when you have a teacher like that, it doesn't seem so long. And then besides Mr. Connolly in uh, the upper school, I'd say Mr. Spragan's uh, 10th grade, I had humanities which is, I don't think it's a class anymore, but um, because I was taking art, I couldn't take um, music history and art history and English or history. So four classes that pretty much all of my other friends were taking that I just was not taking. And instead I had humanities every single day, A and B days or odd and evens, first period, and sometimes in bum classes. And uh, Mr. Spragans was just like awesome, really intelligent, um, just knew pretty much anything anything you asked him he knew the answer to and it was just a really thoughtful class so and um, I made like some of my best friends in that class that I had 
probably wouldn't have if I didn't see them every single day. So a really good group in that 10th grade humanities class. What Do you remember some of the books or some of the readings that you had in that class? A lot of them were not like books, but like we would never really read a book from start to finish. We'd kind of just read like excerpts from like maybe like ancient Greek or Roman. We read a lot of Shakespeare. We read um, Candide, I believe. We read, um, uh, I forgot the name of the book at the end of the year, but it was really sad about um, a man who's in the Holocaust. Um, we read a lot of the Bible, which was interesting. Um, and no one else really read the books we read, so it was also like kind of interesting there hmm. because uh, in all the other curriculums, everyone's like comparing this and that, but we were kind of just on our own. It's like a unique experience. And uh, it was probably the coolest paper I've ever had to write. At the end of the year, we had... Um, a paper where we were allowed to select any character, any five characters from the books we'd read the whole year, and they were just in a debate about, like, morals. Oh, wow. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, would you say English is one of your favorite subjects apart from, from art, or what, what are some of your other favorite subjects that you might want to take classes in that subject next year at Vanderbilt? Uh, I'm definitely more into, like, the humanities, like, English and history than I am into, like, STEM like math and that kind of stuff. I feel like English classes are where I'm best able to like um, just kind of describe how I feel. It's kind of hard to like talk about feelings at all in like math and science. So it's more open ended and discussion yeah. oriented. Mm -hmm. and I really like the uh, the short fiction class that we have this year. I mm -hmm. think we have a great group in there. And mm -hmm. even though it's on Zoom, like even though we're virtually, I think you guys do a great job just jumping right in and, and talking, which I think was even hard last year when we had the, when you're in my 11th grade class, when it was mm -hmm. the tri-school coordination class. It's hard at the beginning of those yeah. classes to get everyone comfortable, but senior year, I, I just feel like you guys are so much more ready to go in mm -hmm. there. Um, what, what, what is the coordination cl classes? What are those like for you and for really Gilman guys the first time you're having girls in the classroom? Um, what is that experience like? It's definitely like, uh, it's pretty like funny at times because when you get your schedule over the summer, um, you're reaching out to like any girls that you know at the other schools, like who do I know, who do I know? And usually you don't know anyone who's in your classes. So then that first is school. I, I like distinctly can remember like the lunch after Kids will like come into the lunchroom like this girl's in your class like that girl's in your <laughs> class, and you're like kind of jealous that your friend has this girl in your class and that <laughs> kind of stuff. But no, coordinated classes are awkward as they were at first. But senior year, I feel like if we we're in the building, then it would be like not awkward at all. Yeah. Even on Zoom, there's a lot of participation compared to last year. Once you're used to it, I guess that senior year after one year of doing it, it's much mm -hmm. easier. But it's always funny to me, those first few months of 11th grade English, it's it's really just getting everyone comfortable and doing some icebreakers. Mm -hmm. And Because my first year teaching, it was like, it was so hard. Because I, I was shocked because I went to a public school and I had girls in my class mm -hmm. all my life. But I didn't really realize the dynamics of the room and I was like, what's what's going on with you guys? What's wrong with you? Why why is it so quiet in here? But everyone's just on eggshells. Everyone's nervous. Mm -hmm. um, so, Tim, I want to maybe ask you, as you go to college next year and you're looking back at Gilman as a whole, we talked about your classes. Uh, we talked about some of your teachers. What do you think you're going to miss the most about Gilman? And what do you think really makes Gilman so special or unique? Uh, I'd probably say the thing I'm going to miss the most is just, like, I've never really had to make new friends or I've never really had to, um, I've never been so, like, thrown out in the open. Um, coming into third grade, obviously, I was a new kid, but, like, I feel like in lower school, everyone's kind of just, like, a new kid. No one really knows what they are, who they are. But at Gilman, I feel like now, no matter what grade you enter, it's pretty easy easy unless you maybe enter like a senior this year senior year where it's all online i feel like it's pretty easy to just um like keep adding to your friends or your relationships obviously freshman year there's like a influx of calvert kids and like kids from like public school and kids um who just moved into maryland or whatever and i didn't feel uncomfortable at all no matter like who i was talking to i feel like i just know what a gilman kid is like i know like a gilman teacher is like and 
uh, maybe the fact that at Gilman, your teachers or your peers will put you even in, like ahead of themselves sometimes, and it's kind of a rare thing. You don't really get that often where people are so selfless and they care about you no matter who you are or what you're doing, and at the end of the day, you know that you can count on these people. Uh, hopefully that's how it is in college, but I feel like at Gilman, it's just kind of something you know in the back of your head that you're always going to have like someone who's there for you, someone rooting for you, but hopefully that continues. Further yeah, down the road. that's a great one is Gilman. I, I just think it's so much different from college experience because a lot of professors in college, they have so many students. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, you know, you have you have a handful of students, but you're with them every day. You're interacting with your students on a daily basis, so it's a little more intimate. You you know the kid, the the, the kids know the teachers. Um, it's closer knit probably, but if you can develop a similar type of relationship, I guess, with your professors in college, you'll get you'll mm -hmm. get some of that. But there's really nowhere like Gilman or, or like the high school independent school experience. It's so mm -hmm. so tight knit. Um, is there maybe let me ask you is there one thing that you hope so if you're watching this like five six years in advance or even further than that in advance is there one thing you hope you're still doing or still into in the future that you're passionate about right now um well definitely art not like art making per se um, but just like the appreciation of art and that doesn't have to be like painting or um, drawing or anything like that. I guess I've always been intrigued by like music, music creation, or dancing. Any because at Gilman you get like the long, like wide array of things that people do and that your friends are doing, and it's more interesting when you know someone who's actually doing it. But I hope even if I'm not like getting that personal connection with one of my peers or my close friends who's like in a play or something like that, I hope down the line I can still appreciate stuff like that because it's like comes from my roots. I know. At Gilman, what goes into like art making, and I know that it's sometimes hard to look at art, and even my art, I can definitely see someone looking at it and just be like, this is just a ton of colors together. I think it's important that sometimes you just take a step back and appreciate what other people are doing around you. So hopefully I can keep doing that. Yeah. Um, do you have, I know you mentioned one of your favorite artists, but do you have any favorite museums or art that you like to... Um, um, that you like to look at artists? museum museum wise i i don't remember like the names of most museums i've been to i went to um in italy over spring break i went to a banksy like the street artist uh like he has a museum there and it was really cool oh wow and then uh all, obviously the baltimore museum of art my friend uh dutch Sammet, he his mom's something there and he always gets these tickets and we always just go together and it's really interesting because they switch around their exhibits pretty regularly and then uh favorite artists i said uh christian hook um probably my favorite artist is uh this guy alex konevsky and um one more jenny seville she does like they're all abstract artists but i draw pretty much all my inspiration from those three awesome abstract art uh so, Tim, let's get to your book rec for today, Catcher in the Rye. I love the selection. Why Why the Catcher in the Rye? Uh, I get a lot of stick for this because we did read it um, my uh, freshman year, going into freshman year. It was our book we were supposed to read. and Summer we, reading book? or it, was, it wasn't per se summer reading. It was like the first book we had to read. But um, I remember we like read a little bit like before. We like started the year, you should know like some of it. And I remember... Um, I had Mr. Malchus freshman year, and I think he really liked the book as well, but no one really, like, enjoyed it the first time around, or you could just tell, like, during the discussions that it was kind of just, like, I read it because I had to read it, but for some reason, I just thought it was, like, the best thing I've ever read, everything, like, it was, it just had a bit of everything, it was, like, awkward, I thought it was really funny, I thought it was dramatic, and then I also thought it was really easy to draw, like, parallels from, um, Holden's life, the main character in the book, to like a uh, freshman in um, high school. And then I was, I remember I was having a debate with um, my friend Ethan about what the best book ever written was. And I was like, oh, it's Catch in the Rye. Come on, everyone knows Catch in the Rye. <laughs> and he was like, it doesn't compete with Gatsby. It doesn't compete with any of these books. And I was like, okay, reread it. And then he was like, I'm not going to do that. I was like, I'm going to do it. So I reread it last year during junior year. And I was like, yep, still the best book I've ever read. 
So it confirmed it. What What do you like so much about it other than you, you can relate to the I main think, character? I think the main character is just like one of the most interesting like people ever written. He's so dynamic in he starts the book like really just he thinks he's like the man i guess he's he's just prep school kid yeah like he everything he does he kind of like does bad but he doesn't care he Mm -hmm. just puts on this like front he doesn't care but then you see like a softer side of him when he's with his sister when he's like traveling throughout like new york you see that like maybe this guy's not really just like a jerk and i also like the book because it's not really like that happy of a book it's not like everything works out for him at all like nothing really works out for him and I think the word choice used, like when he calls people a phony, I just think that's hilarious. And everything about the book, I just thought was, it was really well written. And I also think that the whole message of um, uh, when the, the kid's singing, like the catch in their eye, like catch a body, catch in their eye. When he's, um, I think the whole idea of you looking at someone who could make the same mistake that you made and you're looking as a senior now, looking back at like juniors and freshmen, sophomores, you look back at them, I I feel like holding the fact that I want to tell them, like, don't make this mistake, do this, do that. But at the same time, like, I have made mistakes in my past at Gilman, and I just feel like the main character definitely is so relatable to me and to all freshmen through seniors. I think that it's one of those books that you can read at any point and be like, yeah, I can relate to this. Yeah, it's a, it definitely rereads, and I love Salinger. I love his short stories. The other part of the, the Catcher in the Rye is there's so much uh, historical controversy about the book. It was banned mm-hmm. at one point from libraries, and I think, um, I forget his name, but the guy who shot John Lennon was reading the book at the time, and the guy who shot, maybe it was Reagan, was reading the book at the time, John Hinckley, all of these, like, weird conspiracies surround this book. Um, and I just think Salinger such an interesting writer mm-hmm. having served in, in world war two and just his background, but the messages in there just go so deep, but you, you brought up an, an interesting question, uh, with the catch a body song in there. What, what advice maybe would you give to, I guess, a freshman or a sophomore just entering the upper school at Gilman um, to, to help that student or that boy find success here? Uh, so I remember um, every, probably like every other um, senior speech that I listened to as a freshman or sophomore, the guy would be like, uh, when you graduate, you're gonna realize like it went by so fast and you're gonna feel like everything just zoomed by. And although that is true, I definitely feel like they tell you that, but they don't tell you how to like fix that maybe or and it can't be fixed because at the end of the day, you're still going to feel like high school is a blur. But I would tell everyone, and I've tried to do that this year and last year, is just everything should be taken day by day. Like, um, it's kind of similar to, we talked about this last year in our uh, junior year class, the um, writing, and you said writing is like inch by inch or something. Like, you write everything, like, every little sentence should have its own, like, story in it. And I definitely think that if you take like every day at Gilman like that, instead of worrying about maybe that I have a physics test that I failed like last week, and I remember as a freshman, that's all I cared about was just, I need to do well in this grade and this grade and that. If you just take every single week, every single day as its own thing, and you just enjoy like, enjoy that assembly, enjoy the lunch, enjoy that like conversation with your friend, and you can't, you can't like enjoy every single day of your life. Like there's gonna be days that aren't so good, but if you can put those in the past and actually enjoy your time with your friends at Gilman, the relationships that you build, instead of just focusing on like grades or stress or this person's mad at you, that person's mad at you, then you will actually enjoy your time. And then at the end of the year, when you're like writing your senior page or whatever, you're gonna have those memories to write down instead of like, I remember when I didn't do well in my physics final, instead you're gonna have like, I remember that great lunch debate we had about like lacrosse in ninth grade. <laughs> yeah, I mean there there are so many distractions, so many things going on in your brain mm-hmm. as a as a teenager, right? So many things that you have to get done or by the end of the week mm-hmm. and that contributes to the rush of the whole four years of high school is because you're you're caught up in everything. But I think that's the the best advice really to give to maybe slow it down and enjoy it is day by day, task at hand, one thing after another, mm-hmm. not looking too far in advance because it really does. I mean, I, I remember like it was almost yesterday when I was 
Conestoga High School, um, and it is a blur. Like, I don't remember any of my tests or anything mm. that happened then. I, I remember those few little debates that you're talking yeah. about or a game, you know, mm. and my friends, those those types of things. So I think that is valuable advice for a, for a young greyhound. Um, Tim, I think we, we covered pretty much everything today. Thanks a lot for, for coming on. And, Thank you for having me. Yeah, for sure. And, and we wish you the best of luck uh, for the end of this year and next year at Vanderbilt. We're hoping everything is back to normal by then and you can actually, you know, fully enjoy your experience, which sounds like you guys are making the best of this class of 2021. But wish you guys the, the best of luck next year. Thank you. All right, Tim. Thank you.